Anthony William, Anthony William, the medical medium. An incredible day right here. I have two really special people here. We're going to be talking about their healing stories. Aaron Hudson, Elizabeth Stassen. Um, this is a special day. I'm so excited to be here. So I have you guys here. We're going to be talking about all kinds of stuff. And we, we should... <laughs> You're excited. <laughs> We're excited. I can't believe I'm here. <laughs> You know, I mean, <laughs> Elizabeth has a powerful healing story. Erin has a powerful he healing story, medical medium healing story. And it, it's, it's, it's one that hits down to the core. I mean, really does. Because there's so many people like that I talk about that are on Mattress Island where they're sick. And, and they got Lyme. And they got different problems. And they're seeing doctor and doctor and doctor. So you got to hang on because you got you to gotta hear everything we're talking about. I'm already getting a little, <laughs> a little emotional about it. Um. But Aaron, like, how, like, you know, I want to, I want you to tell a story. How anyway? How it all well, it happened about, right here? It came about where? A little bit. So, um, <laughs> my husband and his sister are doing a podcast, and they were talking about the people they want to get on the show, and one of them was going to be Anthony Williams. And of course, you know, my fingers were crossed. I was like, please let this happen. This would be incredible. Kate was really curious, um, and we were so fortunate. Um, for him to come on the show and do the podcast and kind of get a little insight on who you are as a person and just your whole story and everything. And it was amazing and incredible. And of course, I wanted to be there and I <laughs> got the chance to meet him. And truly, it was because of Elizabeth. Um, and I couldn't believe it was really happening, but I did get to meet him and see how and you know just genuine and kind and incredible he was and immediately the first person that I called was Elizabeth because you can call me Beth it's okay, Beth. okay. sorry and she's Child, Beth to me, to to me. me. 30 years <laughs> and I really couldn't even get the words out I was like oh my gosh oh my gosh I, you know I got to meet Anthony Williams and the reason I was so excited it was because she had introduced me to him years ago um, when she was going through an extremely dark um, and scary time and as a very close friend of hers um, it was hard it was hard as a friend feeling so helpless seeing your friend um, in so much pain and discomfort and the unknown and the fear of what was happening to her and her diagnosis of Lyme um, and how it was affecting her and seeing her you know go through all these different um, phases and, and uh, things that she was trying out. Anyways, eventually a little tiny shift happened and there was a hope in her light at the end of the tunnel and a little hope in her voice. And I was so relieved. And so I remember her saying, it's this book and it's the medical medium. And, and this was years ago. This was 2015, no one early 2016. was talking about it. And no, if um, they were, it wasn't good stuff. Yeah, it was, <laughs> yep. it was like the beginning, yeah, of course. And, and I the beginning was like, of the fight for truth, it yeah, was right? Too the controversial. beginning of getting yeah. everything I did was controversial. It was not trendy get, when yeah, I was doing it. Was it. No, the no, trend, no. I always say the trends don't they don't save lives. It's 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 gotta it's be so better true. than it that. It has to be something yeah. for her who is one of you know my smartest, most passionate um, you know, peep friends that I know and extremely um smart when it comes to nutrition and healing and that's her background for her to find something that really resonated with her and gave her a glimpse of hope I was like what is this and send it to me and I want to hear about it um so I was lucky enough or not lucky enough but I, I wasn't dealing with anything as severe um but I was having pretty significant GI issues which is not the <laughs> loveliest thing to talk about but like when you have that. it, um, <laughs> it's it's not fun, and it takes over everything because anything that you're eating and anywhere you go, you're constantly like, oh no, how is this going to affect me? And oh, I I can't go to this, and you know, you're just I was, you know, I, I'm naturally thin. Anybody that knows me from growing up, I ate like crap. I have wonderful genetics, and thank God, but I had this distended, crazy stomach that. Um, no matter what I ate, I thought, oh, I'm going to shift and start to eat healthy. Um, but I was eating all this, you know, kale salads and, you know, trying to not eat the junk food. And it was actually making my stomach worse. Um, I was finally diagnosed with SIBO, which is small intestinal bacterial overgrowth. Um, and this was about eight years ago. And there wasn't a ton of information out there. I kind of just grasped onto it because 
of a few of the symptoms that I had. And um, anyway, she, uh, I just started reading his book after she had told me. And it was this page turning, I couldn't put it down, highlighting stuff. I'm waking up Oliver, you know, in the middle of the night saying, hey, oh baby, you got to read this. And wait a minute, this. And it just, it was resonating with me in my one small area that I was dealing with. Um, yeah. and it really, uh, it, it, it shifted the game for me, um, when I saw her starting to heal and the things that she would tell me and the belief that I had because I was witnessing it firsthand. Um, and so of course for me, I said, well, my gosh, I'm going to try this. This is, and after a years of struggling and nothing sticking and, um, kind of just settling into the idea that, okay, this is going to be, this is it. This is my, my battle. And of course it's not the end of the world, but I'm going to have to deal with it. Um, and then I tried celery juice, um, in my blender with a nut milk bag. In the because, earlier in the time, early, yeah, times, in before it was days, getting yeah. crazy. I didn't have a dresser. Um, obviously. The celery was still $1.99. Yes, literally. <laughs> <laughs> and it was a big, um, you know, a juicer. It was expensive. I was like, oh, I'm going to try this out. Anyways, it was such a game changer for me. Um, it And it was instant. And so, I, like, it's one of those things where, you know, people say, oh, celery juice, and I want to try it, and I want to you know, do this and that. When you really have something that is an ailment that um, nothing else is working for, and it seems so simple, yeah. yet it's not simplistic because the book breaks it down and what it's doing and what it's replacing and replenishing, and it, that really made sense to me for SIBO. Um, but it was instant, and it was amazing, and I committed. I was pretty you hardcore. Did. People that Which know is me, shocking. It's, it's very shocking. shocking. Um, but what was so amazing <laughs> is it was it was so simple. Meaning, I didn't have to do some crazy, you know, take all of this out and only do this and do that. It 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 was tangible, if that makes sense. Um, and of course, you know, about a year ago, or like almost, yeah. Coming up in February will be a year. Yeah. He was announcing his new book, which if you don't mind me talking about it because it is my Bible. <laughs> Liver Rescue, Rescue was coming out. And so in the title, if you can see, it does have SIBO on it. It yes. was the first yeah. thing that came in my direction, yeah. you know, with SIBO and information on it and the gut and healing and the liver. And so when I got... Um, uh, went on to order my book, of course, it said, oh, it's not coming out until October. <laughs> And I was like, no. So I had a countdown and I ordered yes. it, um, you know, pre-ordered it and it came and it You're just like a kid really, for Christmas. literally, it really was. And yes. So I know every book on here, I've read them all. They're all incredible. This one really resonated with me. And um, I know there's a new one coming out. I can't wait for that. I feel like there's just more information and more knowledge and people want it. That's a little bit of my story, which obviously led me to... To your story, which um, is a little which, yeah. it's all full, full, full circle. Yeah, <laughs> it's a little, um, but well, you know, the with the journey. with the in, in the digestive problems, and it it can take over your life. Like it really does. people don't realize it. And it causes stress, and you know, yeah. your lack of sleep, and you're worried about it. And what am I eating? And what am I not eating? Yeah. And I also ended up doing the um, heavy metal detox smoothie oh. as well. Yeah. Which I is have here, one here. I always have to have one because I always have one yes. every day. It's, yeah, I always and, have one. And, and honestly, <laughs> well. that again, super easy to make, super tangible, and really good. And that for me, and uh, like those two, I would say together was a game changer. Um, and a lot of the stuff that happened along the way, I can talk with Beth too, but um, it just made sense. And so for me, it was. Let me read this book. Does it resonate with you? Are you, you know, where are you in your journey? I wasn't in the depths of where Elizabeth was, but I was struggling and it was hard and there weren't a lot of answers and you hear but, a lot of different things. And but we don't want a person to go into the depths of where yeah, Elizabeth, yeah. you know, where Beth yeah. was. We don't want, I mean, that's <laughs> the thing. You're, you're, you're struggling as it was. Yeah. And, oh, and, totally. and that's the thing. If we don't get the answers we need, we can go backwards more. And then something else happens and some, you know, and, and it yeah. just yeah. all kind of falls apart. And one thing leads to the other and it adds on. And when you're dealing with one thing, it, you know, you, you want people to pay attention to their bodies 
want when symptoms start to come up and not sort of you know ignore them and just you know stay on the standard American diet and not do anything. These are warning signs that your body is giving you that it's unhappy with the status quo or you know your current diet. And so for me, mine, you know, if I really look at it, I was sort of set up for um, being taken out by disease. I was sort of emotionally, spiritually, um, mentally, <laughs> and physically broken down. And, and then it just kind of woke up something in me and overnight I was in a completely different body. But I look at people that are dealing with, you know, things that were, you know, painful and uncomfortable and, you know, a hassle. And I really want to implore people to pay attention. Pay attention to your body now before you end up in bed like I was. Because well, that's, no that's no way to live. Yeah. <laughs> but in bed, I mean, let's, like, get real. Like, you know, Yeah. And your, what you, you went through is unbelievable. Is not... And if you want to share with everybody, I yeah. think... I think it's it's the Lyme disease world oh, is what always... when When you're talking to me about it, it just brought me back to... Um, Lyme disease being still nothing but a confusion out there. Mm -hmm. uh, a wake of 40 years almost of people suffering yeah. and not getting answers and getting bombarded with antibiotics. Mm -hmm. Oh, that was the other thing. Yeah, yeah. Course, and then... Placebo too. Yeah. So yeah, I had to get the yeah. truth out. Yeah. I risked my life doing it. But the people don't realize that. Yeah, no, of course. Of course. <laughs> but, but you know, and, you know, you know. And now it's actually changed the movement so in great in a great way that people are healing. But I'd love for you to tell a story because I think people can learn from your healing experience and your story how it started when you just got hit with it. Yeah. Oh gosh, it's so overwhelming, and I don't. I'm aware of how much time it would take to tell the whole story, but I'm gonna try to try to focus. Um, oh, well, I think. It really started when um, I was an exhausted mom with a baby who was one and a half at home. And um, I found myself pregnant again, and I went through um, a, a miscarriage. And I had to have a surgery following it. And I was really down at that point. I was really, I was exhausted. I was still, you know, nursing my baby. I found myself, like, pregnant with... Um, and, you know, another pregnancy, and then I, I lost it, and I, you know, I'm, I was a whole, I was already a holistic health coach and a nutritionist. I barely ever took Advil <laughs> before, and all of a sudden I'm getting this surgery, and I'm, you know, having all these drugs pumped into me and stuff, and and I'm really sad and grieving and um, just kind of upset, you know, mad at the world that this happened, and it, that part's a little hard to talk about, but. Um, I know that when I woke up the next day, I was in a different body. I had pins and needles, and I had heart palpitations, and I had massive um, anxiety and, you know, insomnia and burning skin, um, just a different, a completely different body. And I thought, oh, this is just like, you know, I'm, I'm, everyone said like, oh, you're, you're grieving, you know, you're, you're anxious, hormones. you know, it's hormones, your hormones, you know, I had, I had hot flashes, I had night sweats. Um, it's just, it's going to go away. It's going to go away when, you know, the drugs uh, wear off. It's going to go away when um, you, you know, you just need to cry about this loss that you went through and, you know, just get back to your life. And um, it didn't happen. I spent about a year running around to different doctors. I went to, you know, all, all sorts of doctors. And then about at the end of the year, I got a, a Lyme diagnosis. And um, I had had Lyme disease when I was a college student at 21, and I had had a diagnosis then. And but I'd been it'd been dormant for you know 18 years, and I'd lived a really normal life. So it was really um, kind of surprising to me. I was like, well, there's no tick. I didn't get bit again. Is it a reinfection? Was it there the whole time? You know, I didn't really have the answers. But I know that for the next really you know several months, I was running around <laughs> everywhere, searching. searching, going to different doctors, going to different Lyme doctors, going to different healers, um, you know, New York, LA, like different parts of California, just the way that I can describe it is just panic. Just, you know, can, can you help me? Can you help me? Can you help me? Can you help me? And I would get these large protocols back of things that I was supposed to take. And I, I couldn't 
put it together. I didn't have the mental capacity to follow it. And I know that sounds crazy, but I, I couldn't like follow the doctor's orders because I needed something very simple. And um, I, I did eventually go on one protocol that really, really made me go downhill very, very quickly. And I wasn't really able to use my legs in the way that I always had. I couldn't get out of bed. And I would just sit there. I had to have someone come take care of my daughter. I, I had a cane at one point, um, briefly, but you know, there just were to help her. just yeah. to help walk. Um, but I, I, it was really getting that, getting the cane and like seeing it in my house that I was like instinctively thinking, you know, I'm a young woman and I, I would see people in the doctor's office like that were, you know, stage four neurological Lyme, which was what I had. And I remember my doctor saying like, oh, you're not in a wheelchair yet. You're fine. And I remember oh thinking, <laughs> mm. oh, there's so many things. But I remember saying like, um, okay, you know, th there's there's got to be another way. There's got to be something I can do. And I think because it was, I had already gone to nutrition school and I already like, you know, already loved to cook and stuff. I I was just sort of praying, I guess, for something else. And then I ended up dry, um, joining this um, LA Lyme support group. And there was this guy on <laughs> line and in the support group that was very controversial and people were fighting about it and they're probably still fighting about it but I just remember you know I kind of have that personality of like when something is frisky I want to know about it you know what is it I just want to decide for myself and sort of bring in the information and go how do I feel about this does this make sense or can I read between the lines or you know so I that's how I you know, started searching a little bit. And so I just, I bought this book. This was the first book that I bought. You say the guy online. Oh, it was Anthony obviously. Williams. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that was the meeting. So I was like, isn't it obvious it's controversial? Yeah. It's talking about lying. Yeah. <laughs> Sorry. Um, but so, so I just, I Amazon this book and I remember reading it and literally crying and telling my husband the same yeah. thing like, oh no, oh my God, no. Yes. Yes. And just like <laughs> this sort of int intuitive knowing of like, this is explaining what I am feeling inside. Yeah. And I don't care what anybody thinks. I don't care what's normal. I don't care what's being taught or told. Yeah. I know that what I'm doing right now is making me go down, down, down. And I would call my Lyme doctor and say, I, I really don't think this is right. And he would say, you get, you get much worse before you get better. You're gonna get worse before you get better. And, Maybe there there is you know detoxing and stuff on any protocol, but you're not you you're not supposed to get much worse with yes. Lyme to get better. That's only because they don't know anything about yes. it. Like, it was oh, the, the Herxheimer reaction. It was the the, they don't even know what that is and, exactly. And so so you know I had to basically shut out all of that and just go. I know my body. I've been in this body for you know a long time, and I know this is not right. And um, maybe that worked for someone and that's their story, but this is not working for me. And I remember literally like walking and going like, God, give me a sign. If I'm supposed to get off the, you know, standard protocol and, and get on this, give me a sign. And I, I had, I was taking a walk and I went back to, um, my car where, where I was walking and one of my best friends, Chris had texted me a picture of this book and was like, I was just thinking about you. Have you checked out this guy? I think you should check it out. And I had just asked for a sign. So I was like, okay, <laughs> I'm getting it off, getting off of that today and I'm switching to this. And within about four weeks, I right. was out of bed. <laughs> I, I was making, I started slow. I was like, you know, okay, I can start in my kitchen. I'm just going to do the celery juice. I'm just going to do this, the heavy metal detox. Oh, yes, thing? yes, this purple, murky this, looking thing that's actually yummy. quite delicious. <laughs> so um, I made it religiously for two years. Actually, I, I just like I was like autopilot. I just got up and I did. You know, because you knew you knew you, you knew the truth was there. Mm -hmm. You knew somewhere in your heart that this is the track. Yes. This is the right but, track. But I had to stay with the faith of it. Like yeah. I had to faithfully kind of make it, even when I wasn't feeling like it. I had to just faithfully make it and my healing really came in shifts you know yeah. there was an immediate like oh my gosh I have more energy oh my gosh I can get out of bed oh my gosh I can make stuff in my but, kitchen but you know when you lay in bed for a long time and I tell so many people this 
that, yeah, once you start getting better, though, you're going to get tired again because you're using all these muscles you didn't use. Yes. So now you're in the kitchen and you're being able to function. Yeah. But then, boom, whoa, now I'm doing so much more than I have been. I'm not yes. bedridden. Right. But yet I'm, I'm, yeah. And then you get kind of kicked back and it gets scary. But then you're moving forward even yes. more. Did there, that happen? Oh, yeah. There was at least a year, if I'm honest. There was at least because my healing was like two and a half, three years. There, there was at least a year where I, um, my, my mind, it was like I woke up from a 20 year nap. My mind was sharp and clear. My spirit was so excited to get out there and do mm -hmm. the things that I wasn't mm -hmm. able to do even before I got sick. And, you know, I think I was like, you know, just didn't know, you know, and, and my body was just like, nope, you're not doing it today. <laughs> like you, so I was sort of, and I think that kind of helped me because mentally and, and spiritually, once I had that hope for healing, I could kind of like vision myself in the future. Like mm -hmm. I remember like being like, at the end of the I just want to go. I just want to do stuff. Working. I want to travel. I want to, you know, when you're in bed or even just not feeling well for so long, it's like you're in your own, you're in your it's own uh, prison. Really. That's yeah. exactly yeah. it. And, and I it's remember lonely. thinking, and I remember even if you have amazing family, driveway, which I did have amazing you have a lot family of support around you and you friends. people that, but you still, it was this feeling of like, I'm so lonely because no one else knows it, like what my body's feeling yes. and the ailments that were going on. And, and you don't fear. look sick. That the thing with like yeah. Lyme or SIBO or something that people would be like, well, you look good. Yeah. yeah you're exactly. standing up. Yeah. You you're look here. good in a photograph. You're you're right. Like, it actually just took me six hours to get up and out of bed and function to get myself showered and dressed. And I have like a good like three hours a day before I have to go take a nap and come back. Do you know what I mean? Like, yeah. whereas when you were, you were on a clock and that clock was, yes. wait a minute, what can I do in this 45 minutes in this one yes. hour before I'm flatlined in the bed for a while? Yeah. And the nervous system is shutting down yes. and you're just, you just know you're not, you know, you know, you can't push yourself because you, you've probably learned that if you did, you just really flatlined. Oh, my yeah. nervous you system would even, just collapse. Yeah. And my dream, everything, you know, if I did too much and the adrenals start kicking in, everything, I would literally not sleep for three days. And, you know, my husband would be like, did, did you? And I'm like, nope. It would be two, three days just, because you when know, stuck. The nervous of. system gets that weak. And when you're dealing with this, and what happens is it gets that weak to the point where you can't sleep regardless of how tired you are. It's hell. <sighs> it's hell. And doctors don't understand how this works. They don't know why the patient isn't sleeping or not. They'll say, oh, maybe it's a Herxheimer, or maybe it's this, or... They have no idea. It's not the doctor's fault, but it's it's the industry. Science and research has no idea about anything. This is just and with, with this. And so when you push yourself too hard, too, it could even get worse where you don't sleep even more, even though you're exhausted because every nerve in the body hurts, too, for yes. people. Or, or burns. Buzzes, or, or burns. Or buzzes. Or you vibrates. Or you needles. I had it all. Yeah, I had it needles. in my eyes. I had it everywhere. It was so... It was like hard to, to watch. And, and it, for, it forces you, and I told people too in the past, it forces you, I've told a lot of professionals this, because they just don't understand how you're feeling. I said, it's a prison. When you're laying in bed, if you don't relax the nerves and let them calm down yes. for all the buzzing and the humming, just if you don't do that, you will, you will be in real trouble. Yeah. Like you you won't be able to just, just get make it, it to the bathroom. No, I remember I went to someone's wedding in New York and just getting on the plane and landing, I was like, I looked at my husband and every part of my body was right. like vibrating and I was like, I'm like the lights were shutting out. Yeah. It was really, really scary. And I spent the entire trip and I went to the wedding and I spent the entire trip in New York in bed while my husband went and did all this fun New York stuff that you, I had planned you must, my, with my daughter. I mean, when you're young like this and you're dealing with this, you must have thought you were dying. Because I for sure thought I was dying. I mean, I, know. I, mean, I told my husband, there were many nights that I said, I don't know if I'm going to make it through the night. I think I'm going to die tonight. That, my symptoms were so bad. And I would just look at my daughter sleeping and just say, like, I don't know how much time I have with you, but I love you. And I'm so glad I got to be here with you. And when I was lying in bed, Listening to someone else laugh and take care of her, whether it was my mother-in-law, who was a saint to come all the time, or we hired someone at one point to help us, um, and or my husband, like they would take her to the park. And all I wanted was to be the one, to be the one to take her to the park, to be the one to push the stroller, to be the one to make her dinner um, and be there. And I, I, I at one point really said to my husband, like, I don't 
I think this is it. And I just, I don't know what to do. I want to be here for that. And so my being a mommy was my motivator. And it's still my motivator. I mean, I am now at the point where I can eat almost anything. <laughs> so I just want, if anyone can't eat anything, I want you to know that three years ago, I couldn't eat anything, no gluten, no dairy, no sugar, no alcohol, no processed food, no e nothing. I know you're not supposed to eat eggs ever. I'm not even going to say eggs. But I do eat and enjoy everything. But I know that I'm going to end right back up where I started if I'm not careful. So now this diet, all these books, I have all of these books. And, um, you know, sometimes it's 20% of my diet. Sometimes it's 100% of my diet. Sometimes it's 80%. It's always there. I'm always working in the stuff. But you worked hard at the beginning, though. Oh, when yes. you, when discipline. It was, when it <laughs> Total was, discipline. You knew it was right at the beginning when you were getting those results. You knew just how to stay with it. And, yep. yeah. and the thing is, is to do that while emotionally, I mean, you already went through emotional I mean, hell and that before yeah. that. I mean, you already yeah. went through so much. And then to have a sickness come at the same time. Yeah. You know, and, and I, you probably saw. I think saw, that's why. I think my, my defenses were sort of down. The immune system came down. Absolutely. And, yeah. We, we, the goal is to know what to do so we have the right to be emotional and we have the right to experience a, a tragedy or a loss or a hardship that yes. we have the right for that because it's 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 worse than salt in the wound if you if you if you have to experience something that's happening in our lives and then we get kicked down with sickness on top of it and then that's one salt round of salt in the wound and then the doctors don't know what's going on in going on in your body the professionals that's another round of salt and it's fear too. people around it's us scary. don't know what's going on so thank god you have a friend like yeah. Aaron because that's when you find out who your friends are too <laughs> oh yeah that's yes. when i mean is that true oh yeah like, I, I, I have to say my girlfriends and my family were amazing. They, you know, Aaron's been my like, you know, sister and earthly guardian angel for 30 years. And, you know, just she, all of my friends, all my girlfriends really walked through it with me and my mother and my mother-in-law, my sisters, my husband went through so much. Um, and, you know, you do realize who your who your people are and who gets it and and who doesn't get it. But at the same time, it's a really personal journey. And the only way that I got well was to really block everyone out. And and it taught me boundaries of deciding what was going going in instead of looking outside for answers. Like just being here with my book and being with my like I have a little like supplement apothecary now <laughs> and my um my refrigerator and you know just if I could do nothing else I could eat a banana you know what I mean <laughs> and that would be like a healing a healing thing for me um, you know when when spirit of compassion when I was younger said you know in, in these books when when we're able to do these books because it it I had to help so many people for so many decades before I could even do the books to get this to you and spirit said to me this is medical scripture. And I was like, well, what do you mean? As I was writing this down and spirit said, people are going to, they're going to hold on to this and read these words and it's going to get them through a hard time. Yeah. And so I, I realized even then right there that, okay, this, you know, this is what it's about. It's about making sure that when you're, you're alone in the world of sickness, because even if we have family around us and we have mm -hmm. friends around us and we have good physicians around us, yeah. it doesn't mean we can be saved when it, you're that sick because you just, where do you go? What do you do? Even, yeah. and that's. And, and, and I said, I remember I said, I, my, my Lyme doctor, one of three that I went to, I went in and I started, I must've been healing because I was starting to get pissed off. And when you are, you know, suffering and you're down and then you start to get a little like fight in you, a little like yeah. anger, a little, you know, that's actually, you're moving up the emotional guidance scale and you're getting yeah. towards like, you're fighting for yourself. And I remember going in and going, you know what, you need to, you need to treat, forget about Lyme, you need to treat my fear disease because now I'm in fear. I'm in this 
the scary lime world and there's just so much noise and I don't know how to block it all out and I don't know what I'm supposed to be doing and you're not telling me what I'm doing and I'm not feeling better and I was just like fighting for yeah. myself and being an fighting advocate for, for myself and fighting, fighting for, for my life and fighting. you know and you also, don't have all the answers and I was I just getting pissed too. off about it and I think that helped it does <laughs> and, and you're saying fighting for yourself because the truth is you were really lucky to have people around you that were supportive and I think a lot of people don't yeah because whatever it is where they yeah. grow up or who's around them or people don't believe them in, in, yeah. in, with Lyme they, they don't believe people they're... don't believe they think it's in their head or they mm. look okay so they don't no. get what's going on they just don't or understand as soon it. as you say you know medical medium a lot of people want to be skeptical skeptical um, but for me I was like this is you know you 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 learn yourself and you know your body and if it's working I saw it working for you, of course, and that I was like, if any, whatever is working for you can work for anybody. That's how I saw it. I literally was like, wait a minute. Um, but that's the other thing. Some people, you don't have the support system. You don't have someone fighting for you or believing your symptoms or, you know, or it's like, just listen to your doctor, you know? And of course, doctors are there for, um, and, of course. Uh, they're amazing and they're always, you know, important. I don't want to yeah. you know, say it's not going against, but sometimes thinking outside of the box or trusting your body yeah um can help too. can help because you can get bombarded with oh but this worked for that person and this you know this is what my doctor says and this is what the other doctor says and there's so much information but at the end of the day like kind of trusting yourself yeah. and your and gut for me <laughs> your gut, yeah <laughs> but your like gut. it really was i said okay um i think there are plenty of people that have gotten well with the help of a doctor and for me I, I, I couldn't get organized around um, what they were telling me to do. I, I really couldn't. It was, this was much more simple for me. And it was and more. And tangible. And, and it was, it was and it's, more. It's like I always say too. I'm like, it's medicine being, food being your medicine. Um, I remember in the very beginning you telling me, um, I had struggled with candida as well for a long time in my kind of healing journey. And I was so scared of sugar. Um, and. I remember you fruit telling sugar. me, yeah, even yeah. fruits. And, you know, I was like, she was talking about the smoothie. And I was like, oh, I can't really do, you know, the blueberries and the thing. And she was like, no, you need to read this book and like understand. And it really made sense to me, you know, fruit and, and it's what, from nature. Well, yes, it's from nature. Nectar and of the it's, gods. Uh, the antioxidants, <laughs> all of it. Yeah, so you, and, and you almost have to, you know, go against maybe what. What's trendy? Yes, or it's what's trendy there? to have like a sprinkle of blueberries. Sense. People are so scared of you know bananas, and this thing has like what two or three bananas in it. I mean, yeah. I had They're just yeah, three bananas a day every day sense. for two years. Well, the and reason my sugar was okay. The reason why trends don't save anybody from real sickness is because they were originally propelled by financial gain. Yeah, they're backed. By, yeah. They're backed by money and backed by even studies for a reason. They're backed by things purposely and then put out to bank and bankroll and make money. Okay, fine. But when you're sick and you're struggling and you're in your bed and you're, you go to three Lyme doctors, you think you're going to die. And then the Lyme groups aren't a lot of help sometimes in the old days, too. Everyone I mean, there's a lot of story. Everybody yeah. has their own story. But when you try to go against the trend in a Lyme group, what happens? You know, what happens there? Because, you know, I, mean, I noticed that I people. Know what, I mean, I think I felt like. I couldn't really share it. I think I, I there were a couple of people I did share it with, and they were but like, "Oh, you feel oh, like God. you had to hold your tongue, though, right?" <laughs> oh, like, yeah, I mean, there's people that don't get it, and there's, I mean, it's so simple. So how could this? If you're really suffering, how could celery juice help you? How could, you know, we just we love to look outside for healing. We like to go to experts, and we like to, you know, oh, this is the top top doctor, and and I'm, I think that works for some people. It just didn't work for me. Because it was too, it was too complicated, and my body's really sensitive. And um, well, you get sensitive. I got when reactions from you get everything sensitive I took. When you get when you get Lyme, yes, that's the thing. It's ultra sensitive, and I would it's call and they go, "Nobody has ever had that reaction." I've heard that so many times. No one's ever had that reaction. I mean, I couldn't handle, you know, even food. Never mind, like you know, a drug or something that was new that I was introducing. So you have to know. And what I liked about this was I could control it. I could kick it up if I wanted a little more cleansing and detoxifying, or I could pull it back and like the, you know, the killer stuff, the stuff that kills like the, you know, uh, cat's, claw. cat's claw and the um, licorice root and lemon balm, stuff like that. I could kind of ease off that for a while. 
And I would just, you know, do the supportive things. Like if I did nothing else, I just took the supportive supplements and, and foods. Like how could... But when it's the right things, mm -hmm. when it's the yes. right things, it, it all counts. That's when it really counts. Yeah. When it's the right things, that's what you were doing. You were doing that's the licorice root and the cat's claw. Yes. Because Lyme... Lyme yeah, because Lyme... Lysine. Yeah. Lysine. Should I talk about what it's Yeah, like? because Lyme disease isn't, isn't bacterial. It's not bacterial. That's the big mistake. And that's what happens. That's why the licorice and the cat's claw and all these work because those yeah. are antivirals. Antiviral. And, and and I really felt like I was viral, like the night sweats and the, you know, and I think that everyone has their own brand of toxic soup. And, you know, some people sure. have more viral, some, most people probably have more viral and some people have some bacterial and stuff, heavy metals. Absolutely, you know? have bacteria, but bacteria doesn't cause neurological problems. And that's... yeah. That's where science of research is either completely in the dark or can't help anybody out or they haven't done any of the work yet. Mm -hmm. But that's that's the thing. It's the viruses that create neurological Lyme. So when you're diagnosed with stage four neurological Lyme, that's a really high viral load. And yes. that's what it is. And that's the controversial point, too, that when I finally cracked the Lyme disease world and kind of broke it apart because it's shifting now. Mm -hmm. Thank God. Mm -hmm. Because... Yeah. Because their doctors know now, they're learning that it's viral because of this information. So they're yeah. they're backing down on the <laughs> antibiotics and they're trying to bring in cat's claw. Yeah. But but And my doctor said that actually one of my doctors said, you know, people have got I will say I don't I'm not won't say his name, but one of my doctors in California had the book on his desk and I said, Well, have you read it? I would challenge him. <laughs> <laughs> He's like, No, no. I was like, Well then how do you know what you're talking about if you haven't read it? <laughs> And he said, um, you know, I, I saw him about six months after and he said, because I would check in. I had to check in and just make sure, you know, but usually I felt like it was just sort of like a check in. Like, what yeah. do you, what do you, what do you think? are you seeing this? And I would ask, like, I would ask simple questions like, hey, your Lyme patients, do they all have Epstein-Barr too? Or, or a past infection for Epstein-Barr? And they, he would say yes. And I would say, oh, hey, um, you know, uh, have people taken cat's claw and gotten better and not taken antibiotics? You know, I would like ask him. And he's like, he told me at one point, you can get better with just cat's claw. And I was like, well, why didn't you tell me that a year ago? <laughs> you know, like, you know, are you reading the book or are you just, you know? Yeah. And I thought that that was progress and pretty. Well, a pretty lot good. of doctors were reading the books, yeah. And, yeah. but but not letting people know too, because in the early days, now there's lots of doctors that say, yeah, I have medical medium books in my practice totally. because all the patients are coming in now yes. across the world globally yeah. and, and in the U.S. especially, and so. What happens is they used to privately look at the books yeah. and, and glean from the information. <laughs> and, you know, and then they kind of, you know, then they say, well, yeah, cat's claw can help. Yeah. I mean, I remember 30 years ago in my office, literally my first office 30 years ago, and I had a big jar of cat's claw dried because you couldn't get a good quality cat's claw. Right, so I had gosh. to have the dry. And, and I would just take it out when spirit said, take this out for the person. <laughs> I would say, this is what you need to do for your Lyme disease. And they got off the antibiotics, and they took it, and, and they were moving forward. How would forward. they take a dry? Like I'm well, they would make a like, tea. I would okay. take it and put it in a bag and be like, this is what you have to do. And <laughs> and it, it, it's finally taking off now. Yeah. But, but you know, there's still, there's a lot of problems we have in the Lyme world. One is, you know, the labs don't want to let go of bacteria because of they just built an empire on it. Yeah. And then you got, and then you got the antibiotic sales, right? Big pharma, they built an empire off antibiotics for Lyme. Yeah. Right. I mean, hey, if that's the right to do it, that's the right to do it. I'm not, I'm not ridiculing it. I'm just saying if that's what you want to do. But the problem is, it's viral. So we have, but but it's falling apart now because the industry, the medical industry actually took big pharma took Lyme disease and they moved it out of the bacterial category right. exactly. without telling anybody and they put it in autoimmune mm -hmm. which means it's not bacterial now it's mm -hmm. autoimmune but they did it in a sly way without informing too many people without mm -hmm. informing too many doctors it's now moved it's now considered an autoimmune disease which means if it's autoimmune that means that big pharma or whoever the medical industry or science and research believes that Lyme disease is your body attacking itself no longer as a bacterial. That's due to the medical medium books because yeah. millions of them got out yeah. there. Doctors are using them across the, the globe and they yeah. know that it's shifting whether anybody likes it or not. It or not. Yeah, exactly. It's yeah, saving lives, but 
we still have the Lyme disease groups that are just all about Herxheimer's and bacteria because there's a lot of old dogs, I call them, not the people, but the old doctors, yeah. Yeah. that don't want to let go of that because they've been, if you're proven wrong, there's a lot of doctors that say, you know what, I was wrong. Yeah. I was wrong. I care about people too much. I want them better. Darn it. It's it's and viral. It We're going to go this route. And it takes, pers- too, sometimes. Take, takes personal experience. And then there's some doctors that are like, I'm not admitting that. That the 20 years I just bombarded people with antibiotics, because science and research yeah. forced them to, forced yeah. them to basically, and and they don't want to break that. They don't, they don't want. To, and I understand. I understand. If you've been behind something your whole life, you made it your life, and then some guy that's yeah, not a hard. doctor it's like comes. Turning up. around the Titanic, it, it's hard to it, you it's know. Hard. But I but I think hard. you know the, the, our message is. I, I try to stay away from all that because it overwhelms me. But my message is just listen to your body. Listen yeah. to your, you know, this is really simple stuff. I, yeah. I think when I was really suffering and really looking for answers, I, was, I thought about like my plants and my dogs yeah. and my child. And just what are the things that a body needs to heal? A body needs yes. fresh air, sunshine, adequate um, hydration, and nutrients nutrients food, yeah. nutrient rich foods that it's kind of really basic and this is yeah. we're coming i hope full circle and empowering people to um really listen to that and not be skeptical of it I it's, think it's the, not too simple it's what yeah. we were meant to do I, and yeah. if you can find a healer or a doctor who's supportive who's open-minded all the better you know i would i would love to have found that and maybe maybe one of the doctors i was talking about who was open minded maybe he's here now i haven't checked in in you know a year and a half two years cuz i don't you know feel good but um i i do think yes of course there's agendas and stuff i really do think that everyone's just trying their best yeah. and that people yeah. are doctors really are trying, trying to help people and and they're not able to really separate what's story yeah. and what's fact and what's fiction. And it's just a the Lyme is just a murky environment well, and world for everyone. Yeah. I remember a doctor telling me, I remember a doctor friend telling me, Anthony, you know, do you want to put this information out there about Lyme? Do you want that? You know what I said? I said, What about the mommy that can't get out of bed to take her <laughs> child to school? Mm-hmm. <laughs> and, and and he said, You know that you're going against the agenda that's out there. You're going, you're, you're trying to crack it. You know, you're trying to, you're going against all the rules. And he said, he said, I, I, I value your fight. He said, you sure you want to do this? Because you don't have to do this. And I said, the mommy that can't make food, mm-hmm. she can't get up to make dinner and she has to rely on her husband or yeah. anything, you know, and then he, and, and then, and then the husband has to then change his whole life around and how he's working yeah. on his life. His and parents moved next door to us and helped us. And I he's mean, he's losing sleep over how you feel, what's going and on. for the people he, around you yeah. as well. And, and, wanna yeah, and, my, you. And, and my doctor friend said, my friend said, you know what? I know, I, I see it too. I said, you can't. There's there's thousands and then hundreds of thousands of mom, moms with the fatigue and the chronic fatigue and the buzzing and the ringing and the vertigo and the dizziness and the high anxiety. And they can't panic, and the and the aches and pains, yeah. and then all the all and the or rashes exhaustion. with it, yeah. or the hot flash, or the and heart it's pounds, and they all these can't, different things. Yeah, and my doctor told, said it's this, and your doctor said it's this, but it's all we're all you know experiencing the same things, and that yeah. really, that was what really the book really got me, is just oh, there's all these different chapters with different like this collection of symptoms that's called this disease and this collection of symptoms. And then, you know, talking to someone that had something else like ALS or AM, or MS or something that was similar to neurological Lyme, I was always like, I wonder if it's the same. I wonder if it's the same. I wonder if it's a cousin of that, mm-hmm. you know, and, and I just was always asking those questions. And, you know, mm-hmm. that's a really controversial topic. People are very attached to what their diagnosis is or what it's called or what their doctor said. And um, I think that people, I believe in, you know, the placebo effect in a way, and I believe that people need to do what they feel works for them. And, um, you know, that's really, really important to me. But I don't think anyone can go wrong with more fruits and vegetables in their diet. And when I was in nutrition school, we learned something called crowding out. And crowding out is just like bringing in the fruits, bringing in the vegetables, bringing in the herbal teas and stuff. And just kind of crowding out the bad stuff 
and you know you're just naturally that. gonna you're that. naturally gonna eat a lot less like cheese chocolate beer and wine if you are you know ha I listen I hear I've listened to all your stuff so I, I hear in my head now it's like you know compassion is in your ear you're in my ear and it's literally <laughs> like like well you could have one salad today but two would be better <laughs> and sometimes and a lot of times I don't sound compassionate okay I'm sure I don't sound at least, no it's the, 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 definitely you know. not. <laughs> It's more like this, you know, just this like uh, annoying sort of. Yeah, like, I'm like a, I'm like a mosquito, right, and the right. thing, you know, like but, you know, it just the, it's almost like your subconscious <laughs> of like you know get get that butter, you know, do the butter lettuce, I, like you yeah. know, do the butter leaf do the, lettuce. Like, can you just steam a little asparagus on the side with dinner tonight? And so I always have that. Like, how can I work it in? How can I make it part of my life? How can I bring it to my family so that they don't get sick and. And, you know, to people that want to hear it. You know, it, it's the little things that we take for granted when we're strong and mm -hmm. we're feeling good. Oh, mm -hmm. It's every little thing. Yes. It's not, can I <sighs> step out the front door and get to my little herb garden <laughs> so I can maybe pluck some parsley that... <laughs> You know, yes, that I couldn't even plant because yes. my husband had to plant because yes. I'm, or there's the little things. Can I, can I actually, you know, take a shower? Yeah. yeah. Like how hard was were showers at oh, times? The, was it like I, I got pots. a plan around? I had pots. Shower? So any kind of hot water, I couldn't breathe in the shower and I would feel like, just like I was going to pass out whenever I took yeah. a shower and I'd have to kind of like sit down or lay down. Um, I was really happiest laying down and I know that sounds crazy, but. Just to get downstairs or to get dressed to hang out with my family was really hard. And, you know, my daughter at the time was so, so young that, you know, I think just it almost gave me more presence and attention to be with her in the house because um, I obviously couldn't work or anything. But, um, you know, she but if she wanted to go and do something, I like not go and do something, but yeah, if she wanted to. It was daddy. It was um, uh our, my mother-in-law, yeah. Sarah, it was family, um, or it was um, Nora, the woman who we brought in to help, who was supposed to be like a babysitter for 15 hours a week, who ended up becoming like almost full-time or full-time at one point, because the sicker I got, the more I needed help. And then, you know, not everyone has that luxury. Um, and, you know, I think if we had continued going the route that I was, it would, it, you know, we wouldn't have been able to do it. But, um, but yeah. every little thing counts when you're, and then you're you're, and then you have to get into a mindset of I'm grateful I can shower today. I'm grateful I can get downstairs yes. and probably be on the couch for a little while and sit yeah. up. Yeah, that's another thing too. It's like how long can I sit up before I have to lay down? That yeah. happens to a lot of people. Sitting I, I, up for like there were short hours of the day, and then like I noticed as I was healing, like it would get longer and longer, and then I would like get up and out. The healing to me was just like it would come. It wasn't like, oh, I'm healed. It was just one thing, then one thing that I could do. I could do more. Was it more three more. steps up, two steps back? Like I said yes. on all my podcasts. It was a roller coaster like, ride. And I want to say that for people that are doing this right now, and maybe you're in year one or two, I don't know. Some, some people, you know, it takes longer, some people it takes shorter, but just faithful, just faithfully, you know, if you believe it and it resonates with you, just faithfully do it because then you're just going to get a shift. And then you get another shift, and then you're gonna have a setback. But if you just keep getting back on, just keep getting back on and believe it, then that's when it really worked for me. And I also think the emotional part of you know healing your emotional stuff is is it's all mind, body, spirit. So this is your body that you're healing, but also your brain works better when you're eating clean, well, and yeah. you're able to have more hope and um, you know just my spirit really when once I healed my broken spirit I think of oh, I remember <laughs> like just the shift the yeah. seeing it in your eyes and, and then PTSD like, though uh, yes I mean, yeah. when that. you're when you're feeling good physically you can conquer anything emotionally when you're when the physical is down mm -hmm. yes that's when the emotional wounds are hard that's when everything is hard because you can't even distract yourself from you can't even do like I'm gonna go and take a jog I'm going to go and take a run, no you know, way. I'm going to go and do this because you can distract yourself when you're feeling good to help battle emotional turmoil. Mm -hmm. How many people go, I'm going to go and meditate. I'm going to go on a hill. I'm going to climb on a hike. I'm going to yeah. take a hike today with my girlfriend or yeah. my boyfriend. And I'm going to go for a hike because I'm battling some stuff emotionally. I went to an emotional counselor, this and that, but they can, when you're feeling good enough, you can actually 
Take action. You can yeah. take action. You yes. can you can keep yourself busy. You can distract yourself. You can hop on a treadmill for half an hour. I have so many people yeah. that say, you know, I hop on a treadmill to burn off my steam and, and adjust me and balance me emotionally. But when you get hit with that, the viral yeah. issues and the, and you get hit and knocked down. Yeah. And and now you're just laying in a bed. I yeah. tell people, hang so in there. There's a sense. way. Uh, there's a way up. There's a way up to heal. There's a way out yes. of the bed. Mm -hmm. And there's a way to getting back to doing things you love again, whatever that might be. It could be the smallest things, like taking a little walk on the street. Yeah. I mean, anything. Oh, I mean, yeah. For me, it was eating, like, yeah. foods that I couldn't eat for so yes. long. I mean, it's that simple. Sometimes it's more physical and, and um, heavy, but... And then it becomes just, social. Like, you yeah, can partake in something with people that you couldn't do yeah. or, you know... I, I think yeah. <laughs> I'm not. I'm not saying anything. But um, well, conversing. So yes. if you're in a social environment, you get together with some friends mm -hmm. or even family, and you can't socialize the way you want mm -hmm. to or express yeah. yourself. Because you have so oh, no, I was hiding. Inside of you. I mean, we would have hiding. stuff at my That's house, inner and I would be hiding in my room, or I would, you know, just get overwhelmed with the hol just the holidays. Like I wanted to be there for my family. I wanted to cook and have people, and I would just be like. I can't handle this. I have to be in my room because my nervous system was collapsing. And that's around family. You know, we're more comfortable yeah. when we're at we're, when we're around family. Right. Well, what about friends you haven't seen in a while? It could be really difficult because now oh, no. or work or uh, anything or, that you or have work. To go into, I mean, forget working, yeah. and then it takes it to a new level of 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 being hard on the nervous system. Mm -hmm. These are all things people are going through with yeah. their Lyme and going through with their different symptoms. And you 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 push through this. I know. You, I can't you, believe you it. You rose out of the warrior. ashes. This is what I talk about, <laughs> rising mean, out of I, the ashes. And you know, I'm when you... because of you. It's not like, I mean, I, you know, this, this you is got more energy. You got more energy than I do today because I'm trying to finish up a book. <laughs> yeah. And I'm, and I'm killing myself on every, like, chance I can. You right. got more energy than I do right now. You're, like, you're popping with energy. <laughs> you're like, no, shift. no. I mean, am I, am I just shift. making that up no, that she's got the energy? Seeing it as the friend, it was, like, first of all, it was just, it was a heavy time. It was dark, and it was scary. And, like, we know we talked about the fear, but it's that fear of the unknown. What's happening to me? No one really knows. What does this mean? How am I going to get better? And then it was like this little tiny light at the end of the tunnel and this process and the belief and seeing the shifts. And then literally just, you know, over time, there was one day I, I came to the house and I said, wow, I was like, you're back. Like it was just a vibrancy and it was um, a lightness and, you know, and, and she's literally super mom. She's the, literally the greatest mom in the whole world. Um, and But you see it. You see her energy and her passion and... She doesn't want to miss a minute of no. anything. And it's that the is the gift. And the yeah. gift. Yeah. That's the gift of anyone who has chronic illness or anyone that's spent time down. Whether you're in yeah. bed or, you know, some of the times I was in bed, sometimes I was just at home on my couch in my pajamas, like, wanting to get dressed and, like, you know, wanting to get out and, like, participate in life. But it's hard on that's mommies. the gift. It's hard on mommies because you're mommies wondering you're... if it's affecting your children. You wonder if it's in some way. And you're trying way. to take care and, of your child, and... but you... You have to take care of yourself. And, yeah. you know, that's, I think for mommies, it's the hardest thing because you are still, even if you have somebody helping you, you're still consumed with your child. At least I was just annoyingly there all the time and like unable to let someone really do it as much as I, you know, should have probably. But you can hardly, you can't listen to what you need when you have a crying baby, eh? a yeah. <laughs> or a colicky baby, which I had. Um, and, you're exhausted. It's just very hard. It's hard, you know, in my practice, even before this, like mommy's feeding themselves like a nutritious lunch, even, yeah. you know, instead of like eating like a, a sugary bar and going off to do a million things for their kids. We're, we're of service to our children. That, that is what mo mothers are of service to their children and their homes and their husbands. And, um, and so when you're sick and you can't provide that environment and that basic love stuff. and that basic yeah. nurturing that you want to it is very very tough on everybody um everyone your spouse your kids everybody so um so the, the gifts of having chronic illness are if you've spent time down then when you're it's the motivation of i want to get out i want to do this and this and then once you're feeling better you're like i'm gonna do everything and it gives you like this new <laughs> zest for life like i'm planning yeah. all these trips right now and i'm super excited and i go to concerts now and i 
I'm, you know, I've taken so many road trips since I got well. I'm oh dragging my, my family across and you, the country. Do you still think about it now? Like, I'm on a road trip. I could, couldn't have done a road trip, uh, yes. you know, back a few years ago. You There's were thinking, no these, way. Oh, do you know how you think I mean, about I that? When and she was, she no won way. the lot, like, was doing the lottery, even oh, yeah. just to meet you. Oh, yeah. Yes. yeah. Oh, my have God. have a consultation or whatever it was um, in the books. And the, I, oh, it, that so, reminds me of a yeah. point, too. Can you just let yeah. everybody know that because I, I don't see anybody anymore, okay, mm -hmm. I, I, you know, on that level, and I, I can't because I'm writing the books and everything like yeah. that. That the information's it's in these there. books, right? It's there oh, yes. and all everything else That's what because was so amazing. The, because I had to stop helping out people because the waiting list was in the millions. So I had I had to put it in the books years ago. It's you there. were probably the last yes. person I spoke to. Yes, we haven't even talked time. about this. <laughs> so I I um, applied to win the lottery and I had this like weird feeling I was going to win, which I never have because I lose everything. But I. I did actually win, and um, the, it was February of 2016, and I was one of the last people. Yeah, right? that, was, that, that was, was pretty much when it stopped, it stopped because right. I and had to keep up with the books and get the information to the world. It was right so at amazing. that point. I, and and so that's, I feel like, liver rescue. Because there were, there were hundreds of thousands of mommies mm -hmm. in the waiting list, mm -hmm. and, 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 and hundred, oh hundreds of thousands <laughs> of children in the waiting list. And it was it was breaking my heart, and there, I had to do the books because I knew there was no way I can do it alone and get to everybody. Yeah, it, it no just way. can't happen. And so, um, but now I, you have dosages in the books. It was a mirror. No, which is dosages amazing. in the books. So this and they all this get more specific, specific. I feel like too. This one has on. dosages. Now. Well, this has the supplements. This has the supplements in the book, right. but it doesn't have the dosages. No, but I always and said I was go really to your windy, doctor, and I would yeah. do like two drops and think mm -hmm. that was going to get me well. <laughs> And then you're and then, like, and no, then you the need dosages to. Came. Large, amazing. Large, yes. And then you said you have one coming out. With I dosages. have a book coming out. I'm, I'm working on it. I'm, I'm about amazing. to hand it in. This would be amazing. And it has over 200 different symptoms and conditions and the dosages right, right. to what you need more to specific. do. This yeah. is recipe. And incredible I think each foods. book got more specific thing. along the way. Yeah. It's like the first one reading felt like the Bible. of. Yeah, this is the Bible. If, if you, yeah, 100%. And then they all kind of get a little more specific to... You know, but the but the general, um, you know, theme I, I would say through all of them is the same, which yeah. is you know Epstein Barr and um, yeah, the shingles, shingles and the viruses, the, bar, the viruses, heavy metals, and the, liver. the heavy metals, because what people need to know is the viruses feed off the heavy metals. Yep. Mm -hmm. And and yeah, all you need is a trigger, an emotional hardship. Mm -hmm. uh, I talk about that in the books yeah. all the time. It's all in the that's, books. It's, all, it's on the radio about, shows. You can it really, I mean, that's also one thing I want to say is I won the lottery. I got to consult with him. I, he was supposed to only give me 30 minutes. He gave me 60 minutes. I did? You oh, my God. I, I, I really threw the day off then. That means my day was shot because of all this. this so, But it, it was 2016, and then I never talked to him again after. I just had the books. And I had um, the internet, and I just would listen to the 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 Hay House, guess, so, yeah, yeah. yeah. And I just would take notes. And then I think what happens is I had zero intuition <laughs> about what was good. I could help everyone else. But oh, I doubt that. I doubt uh, that. No, 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 no. Zero. Oh, well, I had no. I like, <laughs> I grew up like helping everyone else, or you know, awesome. even in my practice, like I knew how to help everyone, but. I just put my self care in the back. Oh, you mean intuition on yourself? Yeah. Self care. Oh, oh you add intuition I mean, intuitive for, with other yeah. people. Oh, yeah. Me, it was go. like completely. Because yeah, I, I, I know you're really intuitive. Oh, but, but I was <laughs> eating like, oh, I mean, there were years where it was like frosting for breakfast. Yeah. I mean, my friends can say this, right? Like cookie dough, pizza, <laughs> we're like beer. in the 80s. We grew up on literally we little white powder donuts. We were from very snowy, <laughs> snowy Those are cold cool. places yeah. where all you can do is like drink in a basement, basically. So, yeah. Pizza. <laughs> no, yeah, it'd be don't February, shout out, don't shout out. February, and then February, you would just drink yes. beer in a and basement would, with pizza, right? Yeah. And yeah, just that's gotta, it. my mom used to say you got to put your your winter coat on, basically, right. just your like your layer, <laughs> your layer of fat. So, um, so no, I didn't have a lot of like it was shut down, it was disconnected. So as I was doing it, and I couldn't yeah. talk to you, I had those you know three years. This is the first time I talked to you since then. So I kind of got better at being like, oh. I need today or what you know I would go with the basic protocol but I would feel it out and go oh I need a and little I extra back, this or a little less this like highlighted and I go back and I read chapters and I get so you did the highlighting oh yeah highlighting yeah. underlining <laughs> underlining and you know reading out loud to Oliver 
<laughs> our poor husbands, because both of them today were like, or anybody that listened, because when you find <laughs> something that works, you, it's just, it's an exciting thing, and it's real. Well, with you, like, it's yeah, not with, their thing necessarily. No, so, like today, not, I was like, you husband. know, you don't have to watch that. Like, don't, he's like, watch what? <laughs> <laughs> and then Oliver went to her house, and Oliver was there, and he's watching like CNN or something. Well, like, it's, it's like, not like, even on their <laughs> radar at trials. all. He's like, oh, I'm gonna watch it when I get home, and it's fine. You know. <laughs> Yeah. It's fine. Yeah. <laughs> you know, Aaron, with your intestinal, yeah. the te intestinal yeah. stuff, and I, I was talking about earlier how that could like take over a person's life, and it becomes, I mean, the bloating, the gas oh, cramps, yep. the just but going to comfort. bathroom. Going All to bathroom is a whole All thing on its own. It's, when it's you're not doing pretty, but it's real pregnant. too. Like yeah. when you have something like that, I've had that as well. It's like you, it's you're like trying to be like, cute and like wear, and then you're like. So it even can give you like aches and pains when oh, it gets so it. bad because you get the yes. you get the low grade you get the low grade viral stuff too yep. with it. You get the aches and pains. You oh, get a little totally. bit of fatigue. Aches and pains all the time. Anybody that knows me, I, I surprising that I can actually be facing you guys. You know, because I yeah. always have. Yeah, you have the neck, neck pain, issues shoulders, and, neck yep. issues, and everything. Because I remember being at Kate's house. Yeah. With you guys, and 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 we took a little yeah. look and everything. We yeah, look he, at everybody he, he didn't there. know anything, uh, you know, yeah. about me. I was just excited to meet him, and you know, my husband said he can't leave without you know. You got Aaron yeah. And reading. You guys, I don't want you guys to think that I'm out there doing readings. No, there. They, no, no. They, they said you're not leaving. Yes. You're not leaving <laughs> Kate's house. Without and they, reading me. Without yeah, and they Which said that, so and nice. I and and no, but that's. But that's, it really was incredible because um, there was. You know, the reading came out, and it was just stuff that no one knows about uh, anybody. And you know, Oliver was his jaw was on the floor, and he was like, "What? How's this? How's this possible?" And 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 it just. But first of all, it made sense, and and to me, I was like, you know, this is stuff that no one could know. <laughs> and, and for years, I mean, years you've been talking about your ear and how you have hearing loss. Yes, and, I have all this stuff going on. And stuff with like. And you didn't area. tell me nothing. And I didn't, didn't say. Know. Oh, like that was the crazy thing. I was just and thinking, Oliver okay. was yelling. He was like, "Oh no. my god!" Oh, he was freaking out. And I was like, turning around, saying, "Huh? What, what happened?" I thought no. it, it was, was crazy. Like, oh I couldn't. Even, I looked at him and I was just like, "Oh my gosh, wait, babe, are you still listening to this?" Um, it was funny. Yeah, so it was incredible. I felt like anybody in that room that wasn't a believer <laughs> or questioned anything, yeah. um, it was it's it's yeah. Um, yeah, and it's real and it's unbelievable. And no matter what your ailments are. I feel like there's something in yeah. These I put books. that. I, I don't want anybody thinking just because they can't have that chance exactly that they can't get the information. Because it's I not true. Met you, it's in the books. And I this was just from reading yeah, and, books. Yeah, exactly. You know, I know. And so and, I and I had my uh, complete experience, literally, kind of just you know watching her heal, reading, connecting to it, saying, "Oh my gosh, this is a." It makes so much sense, and B, it's the first thing that worked that really worked and I committed to it just as hard as I committed to any other protocol that I was told in the past or antibiotics which caused other problems and this you know was a game changer but then and then I got to meet you so it was the added bonus on top for me and Aww. you know just being able to say thank you and um and just and hear your story too that was what was cool too on the podcast it was fun just to oh, get that's cool get a that's little cool. inside <laughs> Well, I hope everybody. Was, I hope everybody listens to the or watch the podcast. I hope so and too. It's to awesome, it. and it was so, really fun. And I think um, I hope you guys. You know, when when the podcast comes out, I did a podcast with Kate Hudson, and Oliver. and Oliver, and yep, and I. I hope you guys, everybody, just listens to that podcast. Yeah, it was, and goes it by. listens awesome. to all the podcasts. Uncensored. That, yeah, it's very yeah. like paid knowledge. No, that that knowledge was and, that yeah. was uncensored. That and was nothing. You just not even edited. That thing was just you guys just threw Keep me down. Real. I just I was thrown on a couch and I was just sitting and there and go. oh oh crap. Yeah, here it goes. <laughs> I'm just gonna say anything and that's and what it was. You handled it amazing because you never know what's gonna come out. All I probably well, said a few stupid sure. things. I'm sure. I said a few stupid no, things without no, a doubt no, no, because no. you it's you hard know. they're throwing things at you and, and you know look at the end of the day no one is out there you know making every single person happy but you're changing people's lives and you know it's oh I know exactly things. where I would be if I had not found these books and I know exactly where I would be right now yeah 
was and it, I was in it, and it was so my first shift. I had a lot of shifts. My you're first gonna, shift. You're gonna get me. No, my <laughs> you first, you're gonna no, get me. Oh my god. This? Yes. Remember? My first shift. I talked to you in February. February twenty fifth. I yeah. threw a birthday brunch for okay. myself in my garden and in, in my back, like you know, we'll call it garden and patio. And and I had all my girlfriends there, mm -hmm. and I had so much energy to like make the food yeah. and bring That's everyone like, together. That and means everyone's everything. like, you look really good. I look, we have pictures of that. And you know, it I had more healing, little, like, but that was the first glimpse. It was yeah. within was a, only month. Few weeks. Which in a month. It was like in a month. 20 days later. I had like this, that's what gave me the glimpse of hope. Oh. I was like, well, I feel amazing. And I don't know why Did this you, is working, but it's working. You know, spirit of compassion told me when I was, when I was younger and spirit of compassion told me there's, this information is going to empower people. I didn't know what that word meant, okay? Because I'm not a... People think... I mean, I hear a voice perfectly clear. It gives me this advanced medical information to save lives. But it doesn't mean I, I practice the most spiritual or or talk the most spiritual or anything like that. And I remember when, when Spirit told me, this is going to empower women, moms, women, and, every, and men too... And, and I didn't know what it meant. And I was like, what does empowerment mean? What does empower mean? And then I heard it throughout the years. But what it meant was, you know, when you're in the depths of despair like that and there's no answers and you can't even have that brunch, you can't even have that brunch with family or friends or anything, and you can't even, even do anything, but then you can take control over your life and you can actually, I'm getting choked up, and you can actually do something about it, that's yeah. real empowerment. Now, that that's empowerment, and that's what Spirit was teaching me. Like, that's what this is going to be, is going to be empowerment for women to be able to just, to, to not be bullied. And Spirit told me, bullied by the industry, mm -hmm. by trends mm -hmm. in the industry. And somebody might say, well, seller's use is a trend, Anthony. Actually, it was never backed, or there was no agenda besides healing, and it wasn't backed by any funding. Wasn't backed by any science and research. Exactly. Science and research exactly. doesn't even know anything yeah. about celery. Exactly. And you know, and it's funny. It's like how many millions does celery juice have to heal before science and research? Still, like, there's no studies behind it. It's it's not good for you. Oh, come on. But we love our You studies. were empowered, right? You were empowered. I was empowered, and it was so full circle for me. And you know, somebody said to me once, like, I don't know if this was in school or where, I'm, but if you want to know what to eat, like. Any food that's ever been advertised is probably something you're not supposed to eat. And all the foods that nobody talks about, that nobody, like, you know, advertises about, that, those are the foods. Those are the foods that Real you foods. should be looking at. And you're the first person, like, I don't know how you made celery trendy. I don't know how you made, like, all, you know, I've become a lover of vegetables. Whereas before, you know, I said cheese, chocolate, beer, and wine were my four food groups. And, um... I, you know, it's just, it's wonderful to feel, to have this much energy and it, it comes from the plants. It comes from the sun that comes from the plants and then it comes into you and it's, and it's live food from the earth. It's, it's one ingredient, whole foods. This is a movement of whole foods. It's back to basics. It's stuff that my grandmother ate. You know, maybe she wasn't juicing celery, but you know, my mom and no, but she was were probably snacking on it they, while they were making dinner. They were picking wild blueberries or wild mm -hmm. berries. Mm -hmm. I don't know that they were picking wild berries. <laughs> <laughs> That's but, always my dream because I just know, like to pick wild berries. So I'm like, I don't know. We do have the Maine, Massachusetts connection here. No, so right? Like, you know, you know, there's wild blueberries in Massachusetts. They're yeah, there. Do I have to move home? <laughs> That's what we're yeah, we're, um, we're getting you out of. We're getting you out, get of out of California. Of okay. California. Yeah. Um, no, I mean, I do think that there was this connection with nature. I mean, growing up in New England, that we felt with the seasons, and we picked apples and stuff like that. I mean, maybe that's not too far. No, no, Berries, you're, you're picking but, apples. But I don't know. They were wild. You know what's funny? Maybe. You know what's funny? The <laughs> elevated biotics that I talk about in, in medical meeting book mm -hmm. one mm -hmm. that that. You know, is that. is more advanced that. than it, more yes. advanced than any microbiome like, okay. talk. <laughs> way more advanced <laughs> yeah. than microbiome talk. Even today, microbiome talk is just a, a new trendy word for they don't know what's wrong with your gut still. Right. And you know, of course, that's a sarcasm I have. Uh oh, it's coming don't, no out. Rant. It's, no it's coming out. Don't go on a rant. It's, I told it's Anthony, out. no rants. <laughs> Well, you know, when spirit when spirits are talking to me as a child, spirit said, "Look, we're picking you." Yeah. And I said it on the podcast, I know, I know, right? I know. Picking story. you because you can probably handle, handle it. it, 
and you're a fighter. Yeah. yeah. And I, no one even knows what I've gone through through this journey. But but um, the point is, though, is those rants and everything. Yeah. You're like, okay, no rants. You got to keep them down. It's, 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 it's yeah, like it's you always, can't help it. No, I'm not trying to shut down I'm, your passion. I'm just trying to talk to the person that I was who's like, get to the information, please. Oh yeah. You know, it's like, funny. just, you know, but what's you're so amazing no, too, it's true. you're listening. It's true. I get in my own way. Listen, <laughs> I do get in my own way. I know it. It's no, just it, how yeah. it is. It's and, it's I say, it and I, well. and I say intention. silly things. And I, exactly. It's, and it's because shit. you're fired up. And you know what? I was fired <laughs> and up for my you're human, too. So I, I get it. I get fired up because, you know, when people suffer, it's no joke. That's yeah. the whole thing. And people who, hasn't su- people who haven't suffered yet or been there, they don't know what it's like for the other person. No. And, and that, that's, that's my know. issue. They don't that, know. That's my issue. Not to the people that that don't know mm-hmm. my issue is to the pe- it, is people that it, do that are there that are yeah suffering. that are suffering that and you just it oh my wanna, god yeah. it's just well you're certainly you loud enough to be an advocate for thank them. god <laughs> thank god you're certainly out there enough to be an advocate for them <laughs> and um good thing i, I got a big mouth for your work yeah <laughs> You're not, you know, you could selfishly be containing this all for your own, you know, <laughs> gain. Well, but you're I sharing it with well, all Well, the of funny us. thing is, is if, you know, the industry is saying, don't drink celery juice, you need to have all your fiber, don't juice it, all these things, they tell people wrong information. Mm-hmm. But what's funny is, okay, you know what? No one drink it anymore. I just want it for myself. Right. Because I it was it wasn't in the store one time. I had somebody no, I, go, I, had, I go to the yes. store now. <laughs> front, 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 yep. Yep, my, wait, wait, no, no. We're moving back yeah. to Massachusetts I can't, to plant celery farms, right? Go, yeah. It's happening. Well, the funny thing is I can't go into the store anymore because I'll be bombarded. Of course. So I can't go in there and order a celery juice, right? So someone has to go and get the celery for me. And they're like, hey, AW. I'm like, what? There's no celery. And I'm like, no, I need my celery. Yeah, what the heck is going it. on here? Hunt for and celery. so, so okay. now that I hear it, when you hear an article say, ah, oh, celery juice, there's no science research, I go like, good, good. Keep the yeah, negativity keep up yes. because you know what? I'm like, I need my celery juice. But you know my heart of hearts. I want everybody of to drink. Course. Of That's course. But it's just funny. But and it's true. And it's one of these things where I feel like a lot of people say, oh, celery juice. But it's so boring. So it's so boring. boring. Like, there's so much behind it, even though I, it's one of these terms where it's like seems simple, yeah, but not simplistic. The information in the books is what really makes sense, and yeah. it talks yeah. about kind of the hydrochloric Mineral acid salts. and the minerals and the and the you know the I want to say um, you know uh, not medical but just you know the. Um, yeah. What would it be? The the breaking, the making sense kind of in your body. Yeah, basically. absolutely. Well, think about a total car. For words, it doesn't make sense. But yes, think well, about a no car. Reason. You know, you have to top off the fluids of your car. You you know, you get low on fluids. You get low on you know. I'm not. An and it makes sense. But, with the liver but it's sort of like when your hydrochloric it. acid gets low, you gotta yeah. you know find a way to. And what is hydrochloric acid? Well, I want to talk about SIBO for a second yeah. too. If, if if you guys, I, I have yeah. you here for such a long time. I feel bad. I know. I love it. It's great. So the SIBO diagnosis is just. An idea, a theory that right. there's bacteria. That's what the theory is. But it's in the small intestine and not exactly. The large, okay, so the difference, or what I discovered along the way, was um, a lot of kind of GI issues are in the lower intestine, um, and you know it's just a different diagnosis, and there, it's kind of two different things. The yeah. small intestine is first, and it's kind of where the food lands oh. after the it, stomach, it, and it. It used to down. be it used to be the candida theory, yep. Yep. and I, I took a long time. To, I mean, I worked hard to break that one because that exactly. one was. I feel like I battled that for so long. Yeah, and, and I, I had to actually split that world in half, like yep. the we were like cracking the lime world. I had a I had a you know the information the, the misinformation. I mean, right. just like the the, <laughs> the candida, right? Cracking that whole yes. thing open because candida. You first of all, if you're trying to get rid of your candida. That's how we actually absorb our nutrients. We have to have candida to do this. So that so was amazing. a theory. Do you know that candida is not so, like out there right now? Yeah, like because too? that it's was like, my hard work. Yeah. Well, spirit's hard work. Yes, okay. Not mine. Not mine. No, I mean, I'm just a little no, messenger it was, it was squeaking. It's a very general yeah. <laughs> squeaking. Uh, but but now diagnosis. they moved it, they moved it to SIBO. Yep. Okay. And but the problem is with that one, they don't know what bacteria it is that's behind anything, and it's streptococcus. That's what it is, and it's caused mm. from your liver being Stagnant, mm-hmm. sluggish, low bioreserves, and low hydrochloric acid. But 
here's the thing, and then strep, we all have strep in us, mm -hmm. and then it becomes a gut issue mm -hmm. is what it does. Now, they're trying to shift it all to this microbiome thing, like, everybody's like, oh, there's something in there that's special. I mean, right. they're, they're still behind by mm -hmm. 20, 30 years. It's, Crazy. it's the elevated bionics that you know about, I right? Really Did you hear talk that? talk about them, because I've been on the hunt. <laughs> I've been chasing them, <laughs> and um, I'm not friends with any farmers, and I don't have, okay, so yeah. can, are you able to tell people, I know it's in the book yeah. about the countertop, but like the basics of like, yeah. if you want the elevated bionics. Grow your own parsley in a pot, in a plant. Where? In your kitchen if you need to, literally. On the windowsill? Yeah, absolutely, if you have to. So you literally just buy like organic. Seeds. Seeds. And, and organic just... soil. Yeah. And you water it and yeah. put it on and a And as it cell. grows, when you pick that piece of parsley, it's got bacteria on it. Mm -hmm. It's got microorganisms on it. And those those don't are the element. Don't wash Gently it. Rinse That's it yours you growing. Don't have, don't have to. It's growing in your own. It's not like right. you're using some dangerous this or that or yeah. you're using some kind There's of whatever. Like feces on yeah. it. Yeah. Yeah. There's not going to be feces on <laughs> okay. it. You're growing in it. In your kitchen. Sorry, I'm just in like, your kitchen. I'm, no. But I it's true. get it right. It's true. And so, <laughs> so what happens is that that parsley just as an example it has the elevated biotics in on it which science and research doesn't know about either there's not only science and research but all the pro probiotic companies mm -hmm. that that's not what that is that just dies in your system you take all those probiotics it just gets eaten because up your stomach acid it right? just kills it, it just it kills, just, it just like annihilates that too... never even gets down there yeah. plus it's not even Are the right any strains that get down there? It's not, not really. No, not in not in probiotic land, but okay. not even in in earth. You know, earth, a uh, soil born more microorganism probiotic. None of that. It's the pro. It's the it's the elevated biotic. Sorry, not the antibiotic. <laughs> the elevated <laughs> biotic. Slip. Well, which are incredible, right? Stop trying to push your agenda. Exactly, like always, always. <laughs> and it's that it's that microorganism that someday they'll study about it because we'll get them to do it. Mm -hmm. And hopefully mm -hmm. they stay above board. All right, and just stay people. focused. Give them I, know, right? <laughs> so, I need you. I, I'm I here. Need, I I'm, need you I'm helping here. me out. This is good. Well, that's that goes into your gut, but deep in it in the ileum. And that's where you produce your B12. Everybody's B12 deficient. That's mm -hmm. why when people are like, hey, hey Debbie, why are you pushing the B12, pushing the B12? Because no one has those elevated biotics. Yeah. If you sprout your own sprouts, if you like get a sprouting tray mm -hmm. and you sprout your own sprouts, you'll get the elevated biotic. It will just literally be on the leaves. And it's coming from the sun. It's coming. It's coming from the air. The air. Literally, okay. it's like the it's like the Earth's ability to to keep us healthy mm -hmm. that we haven't even tapped into. Just like we haven't tapped into the sun Very or exciting. what the sun does mm -hmm. for us. We still don't even know. We talk no, about vitamin D. It's the sun. It's yeah. There's so much more than that, and so that's what's happening with the elevated biotics. It's it's actually in the air, and it develops, literally develops. There's some connection happening around us that creates that microorganism, that, and especially in the that's garden, cool. especially outside. Mm -hmm. So if you open your kitchen door, I just hit you by. You open your kitchen door, you're letting in outside air, mm -hmm. and it's in the outside air, Can and you it goes plant on it outside. If Absolutely. You have a space? Absolutely. So parsley, sprouts. Oh my God, sprouts. Any, anything. Cilantro. If you grow cilantro, if you grow thyme, oregano, mm -hmm. if you plant an apple tree on your property, okay, regardless. That's not I mean, for yeah. most yeah. people. Yeah, yeah. Most people, lemon. it's not going to happen. About, what about citrus? Like lemon? Because like we're in California. If you if you have a lemon tree, if you I can always find, rinse it. Am I supposed to not? If it's off your own tree, about, you don't like, rinse what about it. Squirrels like poop and pee and stuff. I mean, do you just like do, it, okay? I'm just getting real because people are going to yeah. rinse it because they're we're afraid of dirt. And you can do a really stuff, light. You can bacteria do a, you can stuff. do a light rinse if you if you have. If but you will anything on, harm you and if it has if you know it hasn't been sprayed by pesticides right let's say that i don't think you have to worry about a, a, <laughs> okay, <good>. a squirrel <laughs> me either <laughs> squirrel pee if you happen to saying. see the squirrel pee onto the plant yeah. maybe but I maybe if it was a fresh squirrel pee just <laughs> peed right and that squirrel will how, have you wait, are laughing oh. but we are very disconnected from nature <laughs> as a that culture squirrel. it's not That's just true. me true. it's guess, not just me I and mean, there's people that won't eat yeah. anything unless it comes out of like a you know sterilized oh. place with a wrapper you know. well that squirrel pee <laughs> has less anything in it than yeah. all the people walking around with all the shingles and hhv 6s hb 7s okay. simplexes, this, yeah. that, Epstein-Barr, 60 varieties of epstein Bar, shingles, bacteria, yes. 50 groups of strep bacteria, all of it, that squirrel 
is your yes. list of your concerns. Trust me, that's only, you got to worry about restaurants, bathroom doors, bathroom toilets. Yes. You in the, carry in, the wipes. You, got, you yeah. carry the spray. I'm not worried about a squirrel. Yeah. <laughs> anyway, Do you mind like turning this interview around? <laughs> yeah, I know. Like, it's so, it's I, so fun, I, though. It's so fun. Yes. It's, you know, it's it's really great to get a chance to laugh and talk about things. I know this is I what people are, are, you know, at it's least so for great. me, I just had all these questions for you. you know, and I had all these years where I was no, like... No, it's a good question. The squirrel... Listen... I'm doing all this work. How do I not, not get sick again? I'm not trying to be know? hard. It's so true. It's like we worry about... And it's good you wash things because when you go to the store... Seriously, Elizabeth, it's so important. When you go to the store and you get things, you want to wash them. Yeah. Yeah. So don't get me wrong. It's, yeah, it's right, great. Right. I'm glad you're in the habit. You pluck your lemon <laughs> off the tree yes. and you rinse it. Stay in that habit because I don't want you to not rinse a store-bought lemon. Right. Yeah. And, and for right. these reasons. So right. seriously, so I don't want people yeah. to get the wrong message. The other thing is um, those elevated biotics, they're on an apple in an apple orchard. If you go to pick yeah. your own apples like, like once, once a, a year, yeah. if you get that elevated biotic once a year in you, mm -hmm. it, it goes into the ileum. It stays in there for years but we never get it in us and we don't get enough of it and then we have the metals and all the other things we have in our body that knock them down yeah, right but it's the strongest microorganism that builds your b12 keeps your gut healthy so you don't get the SIBO which is streptococcus or anything else but but you have to ask them if they spray like you have to go to a place where they're not spraying. a lot of organic farms now and a lot, a lot of farms. yeah and a lot of uh, there's a lot of non-spray farms. They're not organic, but they don't spray. Which is right. fine. Yeah. Which is fine. Like the whole farmers market in California is. Like, right. Yeah. It's it's all like that whole. Thing. It's hard to get cert. I want yeah. people to know that it's hard to get certification, but it doesn't mean that they're yeah. you know, GMO or spraying and stuff like that. I'm so. I'm I'm blown away. <laughs> By having you guys here, we I can mean, do this all day. I guess powerful <laughs> stories. No, I can. I'll keep you guys here for hours. Um, powerful stories of healing, and and this is no joke. These stories because these are real experiences, and you guys have gone through it. There's a, what would you say? You guys feel like saying anything to anybody who's struggling right now, who's in a bed right now, or they're 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 functioning but they know they're not where they need to be and people don't understand all their different symptoms or you know what they're up against like do you have any if you have something to say to the women out there and men too and i worry about children because yeah. you know i've seen daughters and sons yeah. um at 14 15 16 years old and mom's just frantic because mm -hmm. they're diagnosed with lyme disease or diagnosed with autoimmune or a thyroid problem like do yeah. you have any words to the moms out there anything um i think well as a mom you know we you know i don't want to get into like gender roles or whatever but a lot of mommies do the shopping and you know kind of control what comes in to the house and i think that you know i'm i'm not crazy we have you know we have some junk in our house but generally we have a foundation and a base for nutrition and a lot of it is based in in this stuff and i get it in where i can you know my daughter She's not, we're not like crazy, you know, juicing and she's totally vegan. She's not. Um, but, you know, maybe we're 80%, 20%. And, you know, it's just really to protect her overall health going forward. And, um, you know, cold and flu season is coming up and, you know, it might be nice to give her a little zinc or B12 nice. or, you know, just fortify her and build her up in a way because the world is, you know, there's a lot out there. Um, but to someone who's in bed struggling, I think I've said it all. I, yeah. I really yeah. just, I want people to. There's hope. There's there's, there's hope. hope is what you, you can want to heal. Tell I I want to say to someone who who healed because you know I used to listen to Anthony say like you can heal, and you know I'm telling you from the inside out that your life can get better. All I wanted was a normal amount of pain and suffering. I didn't want to be inundated with symptoms and so much that I didn't feel like I wanted to live. And, you know, I got there. I have a normal amount of pain and suffering like the rest of people that are healthy walking around. Yeah. And yeah, the I'm ones that we take to, for granted. The ones that we take the for ones granted. That we take and for I'm, granted. I'm not, you know, no. a, I'm not the, like, the healthiest person in the world, but I'm not bedridden and I'm, I'm having a functioning life and I'm, I'm enjoying my life. And, um, I think you can get your life back. I really Amazing. do. And I, I think just block out the noise, tune into what you need. And um, this is something I learned from my friend Robin Euclidus and also Gabby Bernstein. Your inner guidance system and and um, ask your body every day, what do, you, what do I need? What do I need today? What do I need today? Kind of block out the noise. 
Yeah, what do I need today? And, and you'll be amazed when you're grounded that you just make better choices naturally. Oh. And you'll also be shown when you don't make better <laughs> choices <laughs> that you, your body will show you with uh, symptoms or, you know, something <laughs> happening. So, you know, Incredible. I just, I, I wanted people to kind of like take ownership of their healing. It doesn't mean that you don't have supporters and you don't have helpers. You don't have like doctors and, you know, healers and friends, but it's your journey. Mm -hmm. It's your journey. And, and when you give your body what it needs, you can heal. You can heal. You can heal. Yeah, I love having you guys here. Yourself. I know. I'm yeah. blown away, and I just, I'm honored. I, and I don't think I could have done it without you. I mean, oh my, I wouldn't have found no way him without you. I mean, you know, for I me, mean, anybody that has about any it. kind of stuff going on, whether it's the fatigue or the, you know, just issues, and there's so many these days, I always recommend it because I say give it a shot, read it, see if got it's nothing to lose. You got nothing to lose. Got nothing to lose. And I think, like, That's you know, it. just for, for anyone who's suffering, also, to surround yourself with really positive people who I always ask myself, like a person, place, or a thing. Do I have a good feeling or a bad feeling about this person, place, or thing? And it's really important on your healing journey to surround yourself with like the foods that make you feel good, the people, the places, the things that really give back to you and, and nurture you and don't deplete. Even you. on the smallest levels. Even on the smallest, Even on the level. smallest level. And with food Whatever too. that could like be. Like if the food is like dragging you down, yeah. not making you feel good, making you feel like, you know, gross, it's probably not a supportive healing food. Incredible. Well, I'm happy you guys are here. <laughs> Thank you for having I'm us. Gonna, I'm going to let you guys go because <laughs> I know I'm going to hold, I'm gonna hold <laughs> hold on to you all day. <laughs> and, uh, and, uh, and guys, everybody, thank you for being here today. Another Medical Medium Live. Yay. But, uh, Thank you. Special. I love it. I'm going to click the button here. So. <laughs> and there